Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here and I'm back with another review. I'm finishing off the Cube series, but not the Natale films, because that'll be after this, with Cube from 2021. It's the Japanese remake directed by Yasuhiko Shim Hiko Shimizu, and it stars Masaki Suda, Anne Watanabe, Masaki Okada, Hikaru Tashiro, Takumi Saito, and Kotaro Yoshida in this film. Six complete strangers with widely varying personalities are involuntarily placed in an endless maze of interlocking cube-shaped rooms containing deadly traps. So, what did I think of Cube 2021? Well, is it better than the original? No. I wasn't expecting it to be. But it's not the worst in the series. If anything, it's in contention for being the second best. I have it kind of neck and neck with Cube Zero. Because while I wouldn't consider either of these good films, I would say that there was at least enough here to show me that people actually did care about making a an interesting, at least, Cube film. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, excuse me. And yet again, in order for me to actually talk about certain things, especially the ending, I do have to say, spoiler alert, but let me get to the cast. Um, Masagi Suda plays Goto Yuichi. Uh, he's kind of our main character for this, this film. Um, he... He kind of starts off a bit slow, like a lot of the characters, but as it went on, as the film went on, I did grow to like his character, even with his kind of tragic past. Uh, he had some really nice character moments. Oh, excuse me. In the second half of the film, very nice character moments. Um, Ann Watanabe plays Kai Asako. Um, I think she's frankly one of the weaker performances in the film. There is a reason for that, as this character turns out to be kind of a robot. Again, yes, I said spoiler. Uh, but yeah, she's very awkward. Masaki Okada plays Ochi Shinji. He's a convenience store worker. And he kind of, he kind of becomes our Quentin of the film. He was fine, well, no, he was kind of the weakest, like, when he goes crazy, it feels a bit too anime and how he's acting, it's very over the top, and when it was with Quentin, I, I thought the actor did a decent job being threatening, this guy not really. Uh, Hikaru Tashiro plays Uno Chiharu, he's a kid that's in the cube. Um, he's one of the better actors. I, again, there were some things that happened that made me feel for him. Um, Takumi Saito plays Ide Hiroshi. He's the, um, he's kind of our Ren of the film, even though he doesn't, like, die immediately like Ren uh, did. Because the first time you see him, <gasps> he's trying to get through the traps and everything. He's kind of just wanting to keep going. Um, I liked his character. I liked the actor portraying him. And Kotaro Yoshida plays Ando Kazumasa, who's kind of an old man character who's just kind of a downer. His character was kind of annoying. Um, this film, it's, again, it's not a bad film. I th think that rating this the worst of all of them is really weird. And I know a lot of people don't like seeing the outside world from where the cube is. This film does it in the way of Cube Zero, where you don't really see a lot of the city it's just like the inside of a building 
you don't even really know when this takes place. I'm guessing closer to nowadays. Um, but... I don't... Oh my god, I am so sorry for all the yawning. I don't know why I'm so tired. I know a lot of people don't tend to be a fan of that. The whole, like, going for... Let me grab a blanket. I'm a little cold. People don't tend to be a fan of seeing the outside of the cube. But I'm not... I don't care if that happens as long as there's a point to it. And there was a point to it in the story. Besides just being like, hey, look, this is how the outside world looks. And... I think the film... If if I could say one big... The, the most distracting thing about this film was its editing. Now, I don't mean editing, like, in scenes where it's editing too much. It's at the end of certain scenes it'll cut to black and the music will kind of go out and then it'll return. Usually what that ha means when it happens in a movie is that it was a TV movie. This was not a TV movie, but I couldn't find before I recorded this what streaming service this was on. It says on the poster and on the apparent, I guess the American Blu-ray, which is done by Cinedime, who also released Terrifier 2, which was also a Screenbox original. Um, this was originally split into like seven to ten minute parts and kind of released, I'm guessing with ads or something in between each small ep small episode. And that editing does get a bit annoying at times, as it does cut in the middle of kind of tenser parts of the film. And yeah, that that's definitely something that should have been changed. Um, the film doesn't need that. Like... Again, it, it, it kind of reminds me, there's these other films that have gone to streaming that used to be on a streaming service called QB, or it's Q-I-B-I, QB. Like, The Most Dangerous Game, which is a two hour and six minute movie, but it was really chopped up into small episodes that weren't quite, weren't quite like 30 minutes, they were like maybe 11 minutes a piece. But then it was edited together. Oh my god, I am so sorry for that. It was edited together as if it was a movie. Um, I don't really get that model of cutting up what's clearly like a movie story into like TV episodes. But go off, I guess. Um, another thing, this film is a tad bit longer than it probably should be. Again, an hour and 48 minutes long but for this story it you really only need like an hour and a half and i do think the pacing suffers in the first half as yes you get a couple interesting traps but for the most part in the first half the characters aren't really doing a lot even the characters i ended up enjoying by the end don't do much until the last half of the film and the The frickin' yeah, like like the runtime just I d I don't think it's really that justified. Again, a lot of Japanese, a lot of Asian movies tend to be around like two hours, and even if they the story should be an hour and a half. I know I bitch about pacing all the time. Uh, I know I've never made a movie, but still, it's just like doesn't need to be that long at all um there's some really uneven performances here from uh the others the the best performances i'd say are masaki suda as our main as our lead hikura tashiro as the kid and takami saito 
as the kind of Ren character who's actually trying to get people to, you know, pull their weight. He's trying to get people to keep going. He's kind of a motivator for a lot of these characters. And after he dies in the film, a lot of the characters are actually forced to be like, okay, I've got to start pulling my own weight. Except the old man character who never really does much. Uh, and same for the female character. She, she, again, I know she turns out to be a robot in the end who's just there to wait for... She's just basically there to guide the rest of them. Not even guide them to the end. They, She's waiting for them to figure it out. So... I guess it makes sense from a plot standpoint why she doesn't do much, but the actress herself really doesn't do much, like, at all. Um, but yeah, I, I found Masuki Osada's performance to be very annoying. The, the way he plays the villainous turn, it comes completely out of nowhere, and... It wasn't nearly as satisfying as Quentin's performance. I will say his death was very interesting. And I'll talk about the deaths in a sec. But, um... But, yeah. Um, I do think this film has its high moments. Um, again, the gore. There aren't a ton of super gory deaths, but there's some interesting traps. And I'm glad they don't just repeat the ones from the first film. Um... There, there's some callbacks. Uh, Vincenzo Natale is actually a producer on this, which is cool. But um, there's this bit at the very beginning, kind of mirroring the first film, where you have the guy getting cubed. This guy gets a cube taken out of his chest that kind of falls out, and then he falls over onto the camera, which I thought was a cool shot. Not as gory or as interesting as the first film, but still, it's it's a cool callback. There's a care. There's like a laser trap that like scans where people are and then like shoots a laser through them. I thought that was interesting. There's um. Well, one of the deaths isn't like on-screen gore, but it's still interesting. The the. Osada's character slamming the old man's head in the door like to a bloody pulp and one of the most interesting gore moments of the entire film or kills I, th I think this is the best kill in the movie when Osada gets this like tree thing this tree thing comes down like stabs him in the back brings him up and then basically turns him into a tree and it keeps like extending and d doing that over and over I thought that looked cool um, but yeah, very cool, very interesting traps in this film. You even have a voice activated trap in this, which I will say the scene, there's a decent amount of tension to it, but I liked how the original one had it more kind of like a one -er, where you saw almost everything of them moving through in real time. I think that added to the, to the tension of the scene. Um, I will say this film is a bit more drama focused in the second half, which I'm fine with. We learn more about why the main character uh, keeps having flashbacks to this character who I think is supposed to be his brother who ended up killing himself. And we find out that he was being beaten up by their dad. He, like, stretched out his hand, and he said, Oh, you say you survived, but you haven't really survived. He pulls his hand back, and then the brother ends up jumping off the building. And I will say, one of the very... Uh, there were a couple dramatic moments that did hit me, and did get get some emotion out of me. I did have a bit of a tear. Again, I cry at everything, but still, it means something. Where the child character is talking about how this guy wants to give up after he's been forced to watch his brother commit suicide on the screen and they all saw it. And the kid character opens up the hatch, tries to jump down it like our main character's brother did, 
and then he saves him bring and sees under his sleeve he has abuse mark uh, abuse um he has he's been abused too and there's parallels between him and the main character's brother and I was like okay I see what you're doing here and I I liked how they did it they they hugged and I was like okay this is sweet I like this I like this kind of more touching emotional moment in a movie like this and especially later when he ends up saving the kid instead of himself I I thought that was a much more to compare to the first film, I think that's a lot more ex interesting, him saving the kid, rather than how the original had, who was clearly our main character, the uh, Levin, just kind of die because I, I wasn't a fan of that. And again, Kazan, I didn't know shit about this little kid. At least I know something about. So I thought that was a much more satisfying ending, even though it is still kind of the him walking into light or walking down this long hallway and then we find out that our main character is still alive in the cube and is still persevering so maybe they're building up for a sequel i don't know that would be kind of cool actually um but yeah i i think the ending of this is definitely better than the first film and the second films um the the score by Yutaka Yamada I thought was still pretty good. Um, definitely sounded a bit more like anime music than a lot of than the other films, but I still enjoyed it. Um, and again, the second half of the film I think is significantly better than the first half. If the if the first half was like the second half, or just more interesting like the second half, better paced, it, this would definitely be the best of the sequels by far and I'd actually say it was pretty good again I still enjoyed this to an extent I still think it's decent I don't think it deserves the hate it, it's getting but I can definitely see where it can be improved but yeah that was my review of Cube 2021 if you've seen the film let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below if you have any recommendations put them down there as well and uh, move your viewer next door